Hi, welcome back to another episode of Everyday Talk with Stephanie Clements. Um, I'm Stephanie Clements, your host, and um, I'm not doing this every day because life tends to get in the way, but, um, you know, I'm adding to my series and just talking about things that, as it comes up, so I've got a lot that has been kind of going through my head lately. And so I'm going to kind of touch on a few different subjects and hopefully one or more will relate to you. Uh, so I have a couple things and I'm going to start with, with what could seem political, but I don't want it to be. So hopefully you won't see it as political, but, um, you know, just this last week or weekend, um, Judge Kavanaugh was uh, confirmed for the Supreme Court. And I have seen people talking on both sides. And some people feel it's great. You know, he's a great man. He may or may not have made some mistakes in his teenage years, which let me just go ahead and tell you, we've all done things and made mistakes in and still gone on. There's people I went to college with um, that I thought were almost scum of the earth. But they've actually turned out to be really good people. So, I don't know Judge Kavanaugh. So, this is not actually about him. It's more about the issue. And so, I've had some people say, this is great. I've had some people say, our daughters, you know, this was a sad day for our daughters that, you know, they're not being heard. And I kind of wanted to touch on that because, you know, like, like most people and most women my age and unfortunately it just happens to a lot of women you know the whole me too movement has come through this in this past year a lot more and a lot louder and things have happened but you know 30 years ago you really didn't talk about it 30 years and before you didn't talk about it and you know I had struggles with somebody who should have for one, known better, for two, been much more of a protector than a predator, and, you know, when I went to, you know, my mom, it was, you know, she did everything she could to protect me, but we couldn't talk about it, because you didn't want to hurt their reputation, and you didn't want to hurt um, their ability to provide for family, and things like that, and so, you know, you had to keep it quiet. So this past week and the things that have happened over this last year, you know, it's not at all a sad time for our daughters. It actually should be a very thrilling time in the sense that women are being heard. We're in more power. You know, we, we have more freedoms in the United States than anywhere else. My daughter watched these um, confirmation hearings and she knows that she can speak up and that there will be consequences to those actions. So if anything, I think that we have so progressed in in that part and I won't debate whether we've gone a little too far to let too much, you know, we need to, there, there's a lot of things that we still need to pro progress on. There are people who are, um, you know, judged and things like that. We can't fix it all overnight. But, you know, I think in that sense, we've certainly come a long way and our daughters should be able to feel empowered. So that's kind of a deep subject and I'm going to move on to something a little bit lighter. Anyway, so that's just my two cents for what it's worth and that may be about all it's worth. So, um, I was asked last night, though, I had somebody call me, and were asked, they were asking me about business, and they've been wanting to start their own business, but they've still been scared to jump in, and they said, you know, how did you do it? You must have, like, done this as more of a side thing and eased into it, and so I started talking, and said, you know, when I first came up with the concept, I did think I was going to do this on the side till I built it up. And as I listened to different coaches and things online, 
I realized if you really believe in what you're doing, you kind of just have to go all in. And I really am a firm believer in that. And I listen, you know, I help a lot of people, but I also listen to a lot of coaching, a lot of podcasts and things like that. Um, and I think the general consensus is as long as you keep a safety net, you're not going to put your all into something. So, you know, I hear the, um, different analogies of, you know, taking the island, you have to burn your ships because either you succeed or die, you know, um, and that was really what I decided to do with this business. So for the first month in the pr uh, planning processes, I was planning on doing this on the side and just decided I, I had to go all in. I had to be able to market it. I had to be able to do what I needed. So I actually went in to my work the next day and put in my notice. And, you know, I had basically three bosses at the time and heard three different mindsets from them. One was very irritated and pretty much told me, you know, there's no way this is going to work. Um, and, you know, you're going to leave us hanging for something, you know, for some kind of dream. And the other one told me, you know, I get it. You got to go run with whatever. But, you know, we step, we definitely want you here with us. So when that doesn't work, we'll take you back. And then the third one, who was more analytical, went, I can see where there's a need for this. This could actually be something that works. And so I wish you the best. So there's always going to be different people in our lives who believe in us or who don't believe in us. And depending on your personality, those things are what drive us. Um... I need encouragement and those things drive me, but, and while negativity can bring me down, somebody saying I can't do it is a definite motivator. So I'm going, I'm not going back. They are never going to know that I didn't make it. I will make this happen. So, um, so that was a big, uh, motivator for me. However, I did go through a period of time, you know, when you're taking the island by yourself, um, sometimes you just get tired, and I did, and I sat, and so my business stagnated, and, and for, you know, you hear, if you're not living, you're dying, if you're not growing, you're, you're dying, things like that, and so I did go backwards while I was just trying to keep enough strength to survive, and so that changed a lot. And then I had somebody challenge me in a way where I had a lot of people encouraging me and saying, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to come back. It's going to, you know, everything will be good. But I just didn't know how to make it happen. And somebody close to me who, um, well, not real close to me, but knew and, and knew I was struggling, basically just went, you're not going to do it. Quit and go get a job because you're just wasting everybody's time sitting here. And I thought, what? No, I mean, but they said some things to me and it made me really angry at the moment. But it challenged me again. And it drove so much life back into me because I was determined I wasn't a quitter. And it totally has turned things around. But this morning with that um i um was listening to a podcast and it was a tony robbins podcast and it was interesting to hear because the speaker on there was talking about four different types of personalities and that we go into and she was talking about there's an upholder a questioner an obliger and a rebel and the upholder, it's they do what's supposed to be done. 
not only for others, but for themselves. So when somebody else sets a goal, sets a deadline, they get that done. When they're needed, they take care of that. But their own goals, they stick to. And so if they say, I'm going to lose five pounds, they get busy and they just do it. So they don't have a hard time keeping themselves accountable. And then she talked about being a questioner. And a questioner is willing to do what's needed as long as it makes sense. So, um, and it's funny because I immediately thought of my son, my oldest son, who I would have thought was a rebel. But then I thought, no, he is a questioner. He's willing to do what's required as long as it makes sense to him. And the the um, example that comes to mind, he was in fifth or sixth grade, and the teacher had said, I want you to put your name on the right-hand side of your paper and the date and then, you know, the subject. And then they were supposed to answer these questions. And he got points off because he put it on the left-hand side of the paper. And he was really upset about that because he was like, what does it matter where it is? And so I was talking to him and I said, you know, well, why didn't you just do it? And he goes, because it shouldn't matter. So he couldn't understand. There was no real reason for him to do that. And I said, son, you know, um, the reason is probably when the teacher has those papers all in a stack, she can flip through and easily see the names all on one side. So she can pull out and that how she can do the grades. And so if it's all on one side, when she has them in a stack, she can flip through and find it. And all of a sudden it made sense. Okay. Totally get that. He is willing to do it from that point on. And that's his personality. The obliger wants to please people. So they are willing to do whatever the other people ask. However, they don't hold themselves accountable. So they need those outside accountability um, people, whether it's going to the gym. You know, I want to lose five pounds. But, you know, all right, I'm going to do it. But then they don't really follow through. And so, um, and the rebel doesn't want to be responsible to anybody, including themselves. Don't tell me what to do. Um, I'll do it if I feel like it, but certainly not if you tell me to do it. So you got to make things their idea. So I'm wondering, which one are you? I realize, you know, in the past, I have been an obliger. I could take care of everybody else, but I really struggled with my own accountability. I would get a lot done, but when I got tired and, and for the past several months, um, I have. I've been holding myself accountable. And as I create that fire, I feel like I'm turning into that upholder and where I'm taking care of things for other people. But I'm doing what I said I was going to do to my, for myself because ourselves are who matter. We've got to respect ourselves. Just like they say, you've got to love yourself so you can give it to somebody else. You have to respect yourself. And in the past, people would say, oh, you have it together you can do all this or, you know, your business is thriving. And it looked that way to the outside, but I felt very different in that. And I would go, oh, no, 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 I, I don't. I, because I couldn't, I didn't feel it about myself. And since then, since I have started holding myself accountable, since I get up and I do what I say I'm going to do, and I put everything from going to the gym, to doing two loads of laundry, whatever it is I'm saying I need to do, I put it on the list, and I want to mark off that list. Now, there are occasionally things that take longer than they should, and I don't get to mark off everything off the list, but it's not because I didn't put things down, and it's not because I just didn't feel like it, and so some tasks just take longer than you expect. And that's okay. You move it to the next day. But be true to you. So I won't keep you anymore. I know this is a, my longest um, post. But 
had a lot of things I wanted to talk to you about, and I hope that this benefits you in some way, or at least you just can relate to it. And I look forward to the next one. And come back, subscribe, and let's get to know each other. Love for you to leave your comments, your reviews, and come back. Thanks. See you later.